Okay, so in this uh, video, we'll be talking about probabilities. So this will be our introduction to the um, to the branch of mathematics, which is called probability. So probability itself is a branch of mathematics which deals about the outcome of a certain event. So we are trying to get the the number of outcomes and also what will be most likely the outcome will be. So the very first thing to do in pro probability is to learn the best the basic concept or the the Turing set the concept that is uh, that is part of probability. So now we will be uh, discussing about uh, the sample space. Okay. So the sample space. So the set of all possible outcomes of a statistical experiment is called the sample space and is represented by the symbol S. Okay, so a sample space, so it is represented by S. Okay, then each outcome in a sample space is called an element. So we will just have another uh, color pen here. So element or a member of the sample space or simply the sample point. If the sample space has in has finite number of elements, we may li list the number se separated by commas and enclosed in braces. For example, we have um, a sample space. Um, let's say let's find an example here. Uh, the sample space for tossing a coin. So it could be a head or a tail. So we could have that one as uh, the sample space of our. Um, of our experiment will be H or T. Okay, so that will be the sample space. So our H and T here, it is called, it could be called as an element, or sometimes we could call that one as a member or a sample. Okay. Now this S here, this one. So this is now the. Let's just have that one in there. So this is now the sample space uh, of an experiment. So our experiment so our experiment involves uh, the tossing of a coin, which could land on a head or a tail. So that's why our element is head or tail. <coughs> Excuse me. Next, we proceed with another page okay, here. So, an experiment consists of flipping a coin and then flipping it for a second time if head occurs. So, if the tails occur in the first flip, a die is tossed once. So, find the sample space of the possible outcome. So, this will be our. <coughs> Excuse me. This will be our um, example. Okay. So let's have. So we are going to find the sample space. So let's have that one as a uh, solution. Okay. So the the experiment says that it consists of flipping a coin. So flipping a coin and flipping a second time if a head occurs. So if tails occurs in the first flip, a die is tossed once. And find the sample space of the possible outcome. Okay, so the best thing to get the sample space or the uh, possible number of outcomes for this one is for us to create the called as a tree diagram. Okay, so tree diagram. So for example, we are first tossing our coin. So we will have here our first outcome. Okay. Then after tossing a coin, if if it landed on head, then the coin will be tossed again. If on tail, then the uh, then a die will be tossed. So those are the conditions. So we have the first outcome for the first toss, and you have the second outcome for either tossing a dime or a uh, tossing a die or tossing the coin again depending on the outcome the first okay 
So for the, our first outcome, so for example, this will be now our starting point. So this will be the uh, the moment at where we are going to toss the first coin. So our first outcome on that one, we will have two possible outcomes. That will be the head, the, the head or the tail. Okay. Now for our second outcome, so if the the head if it landed on the head so our second outcome so we will be tossing again the coin because that is how the experiment is designed so our second outcome could be again in red, a head or a tail so that will be our second outcome either of the two now if the the first toss the result will be a tail so we will toss a die so a die has six possible outcome the number on the faces of it so it could be uh, let's have that one right okay one two three four five six okay so we shall create an arrow here so what we are doing now is a three diagram okay so our sample point now, so we we'll write here our sample point, is the combination of the is the combination of the two outcomes. So the first one, head, then the second outcome will be also head. So we'll have here, put that one in green, H, H. The second one will be H, T. The next one will be T, 1. Okay, then this one will be T2, this will be T3, so for tail and number 3, this will be T4, then this will be T5, and this will be T6. So those are our sample point, but we are going to find the sample space of pass the possible outcome so we will write our sample space as s is equal to base here so we have h h h t t1 t2 t3 t4 t5 and t6 and this will be is the and this is now the answer of the problem okay so our sample space is consists of sample points h h h t t1 t2 t3 t4 t5 and t6 okay now we have again another problem suppose that three items are selected at random from a manufacturing process each item is inspected and classified as defective or non-defective. Find, uh, find the sample space of the possible outcome. Okay, so that is the experiments we are trying to get. Uh, trying to get uh, three items in which the, the outcome could be a... a uh, what's it called that one? A... Uh, defective or non-defective so we will kind to to get now the uh, sample space of possible outcomes okay so we have here our solution for example so our first so this will be our first product here so let's just write here the first product okay then uh, then another one the second product which is selected at random and we have here our third product okay so at this moment, we will be doing first the three diagram. And over here will be our sample point. We will just have that one in green. Sample point. Okay. Now, so the first product, the possible outcome will be, so we will be drawing a, a sample product. So the, the first product, it could be defective or non Defective. So we have two possible outcomes. Okay. Uh, 
Again, we will draw for the second product. So, the second product, if the first product is defective, then we could draw also a defective or non-defective for the second product. Okay. Then for the non-defective, if the first product is non-defective, we could draw also a defective or non-defective for the second product. Okay. Now for the third product. So if the first product is defective and the second product is also defective, we can draw also a defective. It's just a that one in red so that it be more uh, clear. We could draw a defective or a non-defective product. Okay, so that is the possible outcome of this process here. Now, if the first product is defective, the second product is non-defective, the third product has also two possible outcomes. It could be defective or non-defective. Okay. Then for the third product, if the first product is non-defective, the second product is defective, the third product could also be defective or non-defective. Then the last one, if the first product is non-defective, the second is non-defective, then the third could be defective or non-defective. And in this part, we will less the uh, possible outcome. So the first product is defective, the second product is defective, the third product is defective. So we have here D, D, and D. Okay? Then the next, the first product is defective, the second product is defective, the third product is non-defective. Then the first product is defective, the second product is non-defective, the third product is defective. Then defective is the first product, non-defective the second product, and non-defective the third product. So this is the uh, possible outcomes for this branch of that our tree diagram here, this one. And we have also uh, uh, below. So if the first product is non-defective, the second is defective, the third is defective, then non-defective, defective, and non-defective, 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 and defective, and non-defective, non-defective, non-defective. So we have here now our sample point. So this, uh, this, uh, these are now the list of our possible outcome so we could write our sample point s as so we just copy everything here so this is d then we have d d n then we have d and d we have d n n we have n d d and the n n and d and n n n and this is now our answer okay so we have here now the discussion about events no so an event is a subset of a sample space okay so that is definition of an event okay so for example our sample space is s is equal to let's just write clearly our bracket one two three four and five okay so if we say that we are going to get the even number of our given sample space so we had we write about as e so our even in this given sample space is two and four now two and four is part of our sample space here so our e is now we called as the event okay so that is how um, event work okay so we have also the complement of an event A with respect to S is the subset of all elements of S that are not on A. So we we don't we denote the complement of A by the symbol 
a prime okay a prime let's try if you have example in the next page okay we don't have so for example we have a a sample space in which um, we have s uh, s is equal to 7 9 12 13 and 14 then we have here our event so our event is a so we follow the definition here so our event a is equal to 11 i don't know it's equal to 9 12 and 14 so our complement a or a prime okay is our is the const the element or the member of our a prime are the elements on our sample space that are not on our a so that is what mean as a complement so it it will be seven seven and thirteen so the complement of event a which is e prime is seven and thirteen okay, so that is what we meant as a complement Okay, next, the intersection of two events, A and B, uh, denoted by the symbol A intersects B, is the event containing all elements that are common to A and B. Okay. So, for example, we have our sample space. So, for example, we have our sample space. Um, here okay for example we have our events we have we will have two events a which is a is consists of one two seven and eight and our event b is um, 3, 5, 7, and 8. So the, the union at uh, the intersection of A and B is equal to, so if we are going to read the definition, containing all elements that are common to A and B. So the elements that are common to A and B are 7 and 8. So, this will be our intersection of A and B. Next, we have two events are mutually exclusive or disjoint if the intersection of A and B is a null set or has no common elements. For example, our event A is... Uh, let's have small letters here. A, B, C, D... And our B is 1, 2, 3. Okay. So our A um, union, uh, no, union uh, intersects, uh, intersects, intersection B is a null set or has no element. So therefore, our A event A and event B are mutually exclusive events okay next we have the union of two events A and B denoted by the symbol A union B is the event containing all elements that belong to A or B or both okay so that will be union okay for example we have our event a is equal to a b 
and C. Our event B is equal to C, D, E. Okay. So, our A union, so that is not a small u, but union B is equal to, so we have all elements that are common to A and B or both. So, containing all of the elements on both A and B. So, we could have that one as A, B. So, we could just only write everything. C. So, we have two C. So, this is common. So, that, uh, that is what uh, you mean as common to, to both A and B. C, D, and E. Okay, so, let's just write this one clearly. Okay. This will be C, D, E. So, this is now the union of A and B. Okay, so the relationship uh, between events and the corresponding sample space can be illustrated graphically by means of a Venn diagram. So, in a Venn diagram, we uh, let the sample space be a rectangle and represents events by circles drawn inside the rectangle. So, this is an example of a Venn diagram. So, the whole sample space, this one here, is the sample space. So, it is denoted by a rectangle. Then, each of the event, this one, so we have three events, events A, B, and C, are denoted by a circle. So, that is a, be, a Venn diagram. Okay. So, this is how we could uh, represent the relationship between events. So, the next part of this video, we will try to get what are the re re relationships of our three events, our events A, B, and C. Okay? So, that will be all for this discussion or introduction to pro probability. So, thank you for watching this video and as always, enjoy learning.